Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today is July 1st, which means it's the start of Tarot Readathon, which I have been eagerly anticipating. I think this is gonna be really fun this month and I'm very excited to dive into my TBR because I have some books on it that I'm very excited about, just in general. So I feel like we have a really solid starting TBR for the month. I tried to only go with three to start because I didn't wanna like completely overwhelm myself and I wanted to actually be able to like make progress and get points for my team, which I'm on Team Pinnacles. But we've got these three to start. I've got Murder in the Family for the Hanged Man card, which is to read a book with mixed media elements. We've got The Fractured Dark for the Nine of Wands. I have the Literary Tarot, which is like Nine of Ink, and I'm remembering what corresponds to want what. Uh, but Nine of Wands, which is to read a book with a resilient character. And then finally, we have The Mystery at Dunvegan Castle for the Ten of Cups, which is to read a book in your favorite genre. So, I am so freaking excited for all of these. I love mixed media mysteries. I've been enjoying these series a lot, and I'm thrilled that this is my starting TBR for the month. I think it's going to be so much fun. I did also just get the Team Significator prompt, so we're going to take a look at that because I need to pick a book for that one. So, if I don't drop anything, put those over there. The Significator prompt for Team Pinnacles for the first week is Six of Swords, read a book that has a journey. So I need to go take a look at my shelves and find a book for that. I'll be right back. Okay, it took me a few minutes to find something for this, in part because I don't have a lot of books that are about journeys that aren't like quite long, and I'm actually going to have not a lot of reading time this first week. So we'll talk about that in a minute, but I was looking for something that I could read that would be easy to fit in amongst other things. And I decided to take a look at my team chat and just see like what they were talking about. And one of the hosts has confirmed that the prompt is like vague enough since it's just has a journey uh, that we could include like an emotional journey of some kind as well. Like that can count too. So I did have something for that. And I picked up Mapping the Interior by Stephen Graham Jones, which is a little novella about a young boy who thinks that he sees um, his father in their new house, but his father died several years ago and he starts exploring and discovers that the house is bigger and deeper than he knew, as the back says. So it seems like it's kind of a journey into his um, like family history, into like a possibly warping geometry of his house. So it seems like there could be some like actual exploration aspects to it, but also there's going to be an emotional journey for this protagonist and I think that's going to fit quite nicely. And it's a novella, so I could definitely sit down and read this in like an evening. So that works perfectly for me. So I'm not going to have a whole lot of time to read this first week of the readathon because I am actually working on a writing task for an interview. I think I've talked about this in several videos. Actually, I know I've talked about this in several videos, but I'm currently unemployed. I've been job hunting and I had a couple of introductory interviews last week that both went really well. I'm still waiting to hear back on one of them, but the other one I was invited to do a second interview and I have to write a sample to give to them that's based on work from the company. I'm um, interviewing for a technical writer position that's uh, more like a storytelling kind of technical writer, not so much some documentation, yes, but like there's this um, bent towards uh, figuring out how to like communicate technical information to external audiences and to like clients and stakeholders. So I'm going to be working on that writing sample. It's due at the end of the week and then my second interview will be next week and I'm going to be putting a lot of my time towards that. Obviously I want what I write to be really good. So I just know that my writing or my, my writing. Uh, so I just know that my reading time now that I've got that correct word in there, is going to be fairly limited this first week. So being able to read something small like this will make it a lot easier for me to actually participate around the stuff that I need to get done. And then I think of my other books, I'm gonna start with Murder in the Family since it's mixed media. This will be a lot easier for me to fit in, and fit in as well. So I'm gonna stop rambling now. My battery is flashing at me, but that's kind of what we're looking at for the first week. I'm gonna be a little bit busy, but I am very excited to be diving into this stack of books and I'm gonna check back in with you guys once I've actually gotten started, once I've maybe read something. Well, I have finished mapping the interior for the Significator prompt. So that's exciting. That's a major arcana point for my team. Uh, I don't know exactly how I feel about this. I'm giving it four stars. I think the writing was really good. The horror elements were really interesting. I feel like there's a significant part of like the meaning of the book that's kind of gone over my head. Um, this is, I think, a really interesting story. It's an interesting version of a ghost story. And I just think that like some of what this character is going through just 
kind of has gone over my head a little bit. I think I would need to maybe read this again to really get it, if that makes sense. Um, but I really enjoyed this. It was like a fun, easy read. And I say fun as in like enjoyable as a reading experience and not necessarily because of the content of the book, because the book itself is pretty dark. We're following this character named Junior who believes that he sees the ghost of his father um, walking from their kitchen to the utility room in their house and becomes kind of obsessed with this and of knowing, obsessed with knowing more about his father and like his father's role in their life now because his father has died like many years prior to any of this happening. Um, he's been dead for like quite a while. And I don't want to say anything more than that because this goes in directions I was not anticipating. I was expecting it to be much more like strictly a ghost story and it's very much not that but in a way that I think was interesting. And I liked the different turns that this book ta takes uh, or took maybe is the correct word there. Um, I would say this has a journey. It has a pretty significant emotional journey for the main character as he is dealing with a number of situations in his life we trace a kind of journey for him of complicated feelings about his father and his father's death and the kind of absence of his father from his family and from his life as he's been growing up and it kind of changes over the course of the story so he has these like very complex feelings based on kind of his understanding of who his father was and um like who his father might have been and who he thinks this ghost of his father is now so I thought that was really interesting. There is a little bit of exploration and the house itself is not actually like, I think it says something like it's bigger and bigger and deeper than he knew. I would say that's like misleading. The house itself isn't really, it's not the kind of like non-Euclidean geometry I was expecting based on that line. So I would say like if you're expecting a kind of, um, you should have left or the house of leaves kind of style house, this is not that. Um, but I did think it was really interesting and I think I will probably come back to it and reread it at some point just to, I think, get more out of it because I think I've missed something here. But I think it's really, like, strong writing, really interesting. I think Junior is an interesting character to follow and kind of the place that he leaves off is unsettling, disturbing, but also, like, intriguing and you kind of understand how he's gotten there. So I'm, you know, interested to come back to this at some point in the future and reread it. But that said, I finished my first book for the readathon, and next I'll be moving on to Murder in the Family, which I may start tonight. I'm trying to get a little more writing done tonight before I move on to that. But I, you know, I'll come back in when I've done some more reading for that. I'm still like very much in a research mode for this writing task that I'm working on, so my brain is kind of there right now. But I am glad that I was able to get at least a novella in today and kind of start off the month strong. So I've started Murder in the Family. This is not what I expected from a mixed media. I think this is much more straightforward than the other ones that I've read. In structure, I mean, not in necessarily the like things that are being presented or the mystery. I have no idea what's going on yet. But I figured it was a good time to kind of check in on that because I've just finished episode one. This is structured as a like documentary that's being made. I don't know why I'm showing you the back. It says documentary here. I guess that's why. Anyway, structured as like a documentary that's being made by the stepson of the murder victim and it's following like that format. So each section we get kind of this introduction at the very beginning, it's the press release about it. We learn a little bit about each of the contributors that's expected to be a part of it that's um, like an expert that's been brought in. And then we get into episode one and we basically get like the filming information for it and then we get a full transcript of the whole episode step by step all the way through it and then at the very end we get the like follow-up messages between like the crew and some of the experts involved and some of the like fan reaction news coverage about the show like those kinds of things so it's very like filming transcript like reaction information which i think is interesting i think i haven't read any kind of like mixed media mystery so far that has that kind of structure where it's doing this kind of we're following the course of a documentary kind of a thing. Um, the other ones I've read have been, you know, maybe following an investigation, but if, but the um, documents are maybe like out of order where you're kind of reading things that happened 
you know, way before the crime, things that happen later, things that happen during the crime, you're kind of like bouncing back and forth. And this is just presenting things in very much the same way as like a documentary would. So I'm finding that format to be really interesting. It's definitely a little slower than other mixed media mysteries I've read as a result of that format, but I am enjoying it. And it is really reminding me of like when I was in high school, I was really interested in like, um, now I'm not gonna be able to think of the names of any of them, but like was it 48 hours hard evidence. Um, those kind of like true crime, mostly looking back at cold cases or talking about like the process through which police like solved a case, those kinds of true crime stories. It really feels like reading the transcript of one of those. So I feel like in terms of that, it's very well done. I'm liking the way that things are kind of unfolding and we get like twists the way that like a TV viewer would get them, which I think is kind of fun. And overall, I'm having a good time with it. So I finished episode one. I'm not sure how many episodes there are supposed to be, but I'm on episode two. I've just gotten to the like filming information for that. This is like their filming schedule. And we'll see where we go from here. At this point, I have no idea what direction it's gonna go. We haven't gotten a ton of clues yet, but we have gotten like some unanswered questions that have been raised. And now those are like some threads that we're gonna be following. So yeah, enjoying it so far. I'm glad that I'm finally picking it up. And this is something that's nice and easy to read, like a couple of pages at a time, because I've been kind of reading this around working on a cover letter and also working on my writing assignment for my job interview. So it is nice as a like kind of I want to say filler thing, but that's not really the word I'm going for. Like, I don't know, like a little trito to read around all of the other stuff that I'm doing. So yeah, I'm glad that I'm finally picking this one up because I've been meaning to read it for ages. But yeah, it's good so far. I've said but yeah several times now, so we're just gonna leave this clip here considering I apparently am out of coherent thoughts if I keep saying that over and over. So I'll see you guys later when I've read a couple more of the episodes probably. It's much later in the day. I've continued to read around other things that I'm working on and I've just finished episode three of this and I just got to a twist that had my jaw on the floor. I did not see that coming. It's completely altered the direction of the story. I'm gonna have to put this like in another room and sit it down because I have things I need to get done and I'm struggling to not just keep picking this up and keep reading it because I really want to know what happens. I am gonna have to like put this physically away from myself while I'm working because it's so good. I'm having such a good time and I really need to know what happens now. It's many hours later. I finally made some progress on my writing assignment. I've been thinking through how I want to structure it. I've got a partial introduction written. It's still nowhere anywhere close to being complete but I think I'm finally starting to get my mind kind of wrapped around it and figure out like how I want to tackle the thing. So that's a relief. And in other news, I finished Murder in the Family. I technically started this last night, by which I mean, I read like this. It's this like little prologue page that alludes to how crazy things are going to get. And then I read the rest of this today. I could not put this book down. I I kept coming across these twists and like red herrings and interesting like threads of evidence. I just could not put this down because I needed to know what was happening, what was going to happen. And I think ultimately the solution to the mystery is absolutely fucking wild, pardon the language, because you can definitely see the evidence of it there and yet it still feels like it just comes out of nowhere but like in a great way of like I should have picked this up sooner. Um, I thought that I was right initially there was kind of one of those like final twist moments in here where I was I guessed someone that I thought was the murderer and it looked like I was right and then I was actually wrong so that was really fun. I was like taken aback by that extra twist and I feel like the ending is really satisfying with the way things kind of play out in the final moments of the book. The resolution that we get to the murderer and them kind of coming to justice was really satisfying. I enjoyed this a lot. I'm gonna give it five stars. I think technically speaking it's probably closer to like a four or four and a half just because there's a few things in like the structure of it that I think don't totally make sense and there were some moments where I felt like there should have been more obstacles that they ran into where it felt like too many people remem remembered things too clearly for something that had happened 20 years ago 
but I had so much fun with this. I couldn't put it down. It has to be five stars for me. Also, if you can hear speaking in the background, I have my headphones on over here. I've been watching my partner and some of his friends play Fortnite. So if you can hear that in the background, I apologize. But uh, yeah, obsessed, loved this. Can't believe I've read two books in two days already because I read four books in the entirety of June. So really strong start to the month. And I'm not sure what I'm gonna read next now. It's probably gonna be a few more days before I read anything else because I want to finish up this writing assignment. And I feel like the other stuff I have is gonna be like a little bit harder to fit around it just because these are not like mixed media. They're not as easy to kind of pick up, read a page or two, move on to something else. So I think it's gonna be a little bit before I read anything else, but I'm really excited that I managed to finish the second book today. So I'm gonna go work actually on my writing assignment some more. I'm still pretty awake. It's like. 10 o'clock just before 10 o'clock and I'm still pretty awake so I think I'm gonna keep working and I will check back in later when I've started one of these other two books. It's July 3rd and I have picked out my third book for the readathon. I decided that I'm gonna start with The Mystery of Dunbegin Castle next and not The Fractured Dark. This one is going to grab my attention and not let it go until I have finished it so I need to not read this one right now while I have a lot going on. So we're gonna be going with this one next. And I'm very excited about this. I love the first two books in this series. I think Europa is such a fun protagonist and just so believable as like a teenager and kind of reckless, but also just like so kind and she cares about other people. I love her friend group. And this one is a like locked room mystery where she's at a conference and somebody manages to steal an important scroll out of a locked room. And she's working with the castle ghosts at Dunbegin Castle to try and figure out like who's done it and how. So I think that sounds like so much fun. I'm very excited about it. And I have read just chapter one to, you know, get back into the world, kind of decide which thing I wanted to read next. And I'm really looking forward to diving further into this one. So I decided on that. I also had other exciting news, which is that I have gotten another introductory interview, which I'm working on getting scheduled for next week. So things seem to have turned around for me a little bit. I'm really keeping my fingers crossed at this point. I've gotten an introductory interviews for some jobs that I'm like really excited about. So just keeping my fingers crossed. I am still working on this writing task. That's what I'm doing this morning and I'm hopeful I say this morning, it's almost noon. I've been working on it for the last little bit. I'm hopeful that I can get the bulk of this drafted today so that I can edit tomorrow and go ahead and turn it in. Um, it's due Friday, sometime on Friday. I just said, you know, by Friday the 5th. So uh, not too bad. I feel like I'm starting to get some ideas. Things are kind of starting to fall into place in my brain. I'm just figuring out how I want to like structure everything and make it into a story that's actually gonna be like engaging and compelling and not just like, here's a bunch of architecture and engineering facts. So that's where I'm at with that. But I am excited about getting another introductory interview as well because it's good to have like some options, you know? Um, the other thing is that I forgot until a few minutes ago that each team this year has the upright gift and a reversed challenge. Challenge? Why was that so hard to say? I do not know. Anyway, they're tasks that we can complete to work towards a third trophy for our team. So there are three possible trophies that the teams can win and they can be won by like different teams. There's the major arcana, which I believe is based on the significator prompts, minor arcana, which is based on pages read overall. And then the new one is the hero's journey trophy, which is based on completing the upright and reversed tasks for your team. So I realized that I can go ahead and do one of them because the upright gift for the Pinnacles team is after you complete your first two prompts, which I've not done, finished a significator and a personal prompt off my TBR, um, you treat yourself to a new book, place a library hold, or add a book to your wish list. So I thought we could go ahead and do that. And I think what I'm going to do is place a library hold because I'm trying not to add these shelves back here and frankly I don't need to. But I do have quite a few books on my library wish list that I could place a hold on. So I think I will do that. And we're gonna take a look. So options I have here, we have Chlorine by Jade Song, uh, The Hike by Lucy Clark, The Silver Bone by somebody whose name I'm having trouble reading here, Andre Kirkov, looks like. They've written it strangely. Like I think, I think there's been a, an error in their system. It's, it's not spelled correctly in one place, but I can see it on the book cover. Um, the Will of the Mini by James Eilington, Dead Mountain by Donnie Ichar, uh, Starter Villain by John Scalzi, Hellbent by Lee Wardugo, Red Rising by Pierce Brown, Knock Knock Open Wide by Neil Sharpson. That one's, I'm, that's one I'm really excited about. The Paleontologist by Luke DeMoss, 
Australio by Gerardo Cordova, The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead, Venko by Sherry Dimeline, How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix, or Revelator by Daryl Gregory, Runtime by Katherine Ryan Howard. I'm sorry, Elwood, did I just kick the chair you're sitting in? He didn't care. Uh, he stole my office chair. I think of these, the one that I want to put a, like, hold on, that I'm most excited to read, like, soon, is Knock Knock Open Wide. I really want to read this one. I had already checked it out previously. I put a hold on it when they were first acquiring it. And at the time that I got it, I was in the midst of thesis stuff. So I just didn't read it. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and place a hold on Knock Knock Open Wide. And it looks like I should be able to get it soon, which would be great because uh, Summerween is next week. So if I get it in time for that, I might swap that in for one of the Summerween prompts. I don't have any reading updates right now. I just have to say, I finished my writing sample for my job interview. I'm waiting on some feedback from a friend of mine. I wanted somebody else who was also not in the field to read it and make sure that the whole thing is like comprehensible. And is that the word I want? Understandable? I don't know, my brain's tired. I've written a lot of words today. But I've sent that off to her, waiting for some feedback and I'll be able to turn it in first thing tomorrow, which is excellent. So we got our team significant prompt for week two yesterday and this ended up working out perfectly for me because I've been focusing on my summer ween reading over the last few days. That's been going on, that's about to end in a couple of days, but I've been focusing my efforts there and then I got the significator for this week and I realized that it works perfectly for the book I've just read for summer ween. So we got the Eight of Wands read a fast paced story for Team Pinnacles this week and I just read the Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix, which is definitely a fast paced story tore through this one and I also realized that this is going to work for one of my original prompts off my personal TBR which was the, I have the cards here, um, the Nine of Cups which was to read a book with a resilient character. Final Girls I would argue are like the quintessential resilient character. These are people who never stop fighting and we're following in this book a woman who is a final girl and she realizes that something is up, that it seems like her group is being targeted and this is about her fight to survive and her fight to like protect the people around her and try to figure out what's going on. So I think this works perfectly for that prompt and I'm going to be swapping this one in for that so that I can be also making progress for my uh, Tarot Readathon team since that one is competitive. I really want to be contributing. So I'm going to swap this one in and take the Fractured Dark off of my TBR for now. If it comes up that I have a prompt later that it fits, I'm definitely going to put it back in because um, I'm very excited to read it. But that leaves me with just one of my original prompts left to fulfill, which was a book for my favorite genre, Ten of Cups. Still reading The Mystery at Dunbegin Castle. I am really enjoying this one as well. I've just, again, been focusing more on Summerween this week, but I anticipate I'll be getting through this one pretty quickly once Summerween ends in a couple of days. This is probably going to be my weekend read, and I'm very excited to be finishing that one as well. But since I only have one book left on my original TBR, I think it's time to draw another card to have something lined up to read after I finish Mystery at Dunbegin Castle. So I do have my deck here, and I took out the cards I already pulled, I didn't want to pull them again because I think it's going to be more fun if I get some different prompts to do. Also, I just realized I probably ought to pull up the spreadsheet with all of the prompts on it, shouldn't I? That would be helpful, I think. Um, there it is. So, <laughs> got everything pulled together now. Now I'm prepared. And I think we're just going to pull one new card. I feel like that's reasonable. Um, especially with the way my reading's been going lately, it's been kind of sporadic, but I'm doing pretty well this month, so I feel like I can go ahead and pull another prompt. So I'm just gonna kind of shuffle until something feels right. This one's trying to jump out, so let's go with this one. This is the Knight of Quills, which Quills is swords for this deck. So, Knight of Swords, let's find it in the spreadsheet. Which column is swords? Third column is swords. Knight of swords. Read a book featuring a character on a mission or a quest. I think I can do that. Hang on a second, let me find something for that. It took me a few minutes to decide on something, but I think I'm gonna use The Black Cauldron by Lloyd Alexander for this prompt. This is about Taryn, the assistant pig keeper, who is like this kid who kind of gets sucked into these adventures. Um, he wants to be a hero 
And in this one, he and his band of misfit friends are going to the land of death to try and destroy the Black Cauldron, which is being used by the primary antagonist to create like an undead army. So the group of them are gonna go do that. And I actually read this book once when I was a child and it made me cry and that's all I really remember about it. But at the time I didn't know it was part of a series. So I read this and I didn't know there were more of them. But I ended up getting gifted the full series by my partner last year and I've read the first book. So it's finally time to come back and reread the second book and then finally finish the series that I started when I was like a very small child, like probably second or third grade at most. So I'm excited to get into this again and figure out why it made Tiny Hope cry really hard because that's all I really remember about it. And I think it works perfectly for the prompt and it's a good one for a readathon since it's short. So I think that's gonna work out nicely. So now I've got my next couple of books for post Summerween figured out and I'll check back in with you guys when I've gotten to those. Summerween has ended which means I am back to focusing entirely on Tara Readathon for the month which I'm excited about. I am enjoying the books that I've been reading so far, the book I'm currently reading. Still working on Mystery at Dunvegan Castle. I'm about 60 pages in and I'm just really enjoying being back in this world. There's a lot more politics in this one so I'm excited to see how Rope is going to deal with that. And then I went ahead and put Black Cauldron on my desk so I'd have it kind of easy to access. I am going to be visiting my partner this weekend so I probably won't do a lot of reading over the next couple of days but I think I probably will take the Black Cauldron with me just because it's something that I could easily read kind of in between other things and I think he's got a couple of um, things scheduled for the weekend that he's going to be doing so I'll have some kind of time to just chill and hang out by myself. So take that with me and have something to do while he's in meetings exciting and I also have decided that I want to pull another card and get another prompt because I've just accepted a job offer which is very exciting um it's a job I'm really looking forward to I think it's going to be really interesting and the, the team seems really cool I get to meet all of them during my final interview and it just it really worked out well there's so many things that I'm excited about for this job but it doesn't start until the end of July so I have a lot of free time the next little while so I'm going to go ahead and pull an additional card and have an additional book on my TBR. I have a few things I'd like to fit in, so depending on what we get, I have a couple of thoughts about what I want to put in for this prompt, hopefully. Um, but we're just going to shuffle and then either something will try to fall out of the deck or I'll decide that it feels right and pull a card. We'll figure it out. So I'm not good at shuffling. I have this very stiff deck of cards, so we're just going to do our best. This one seems like it wants to come out. Got the Four of Ink, which I need to double check, but I think, please don't fall over, the Four of Ink is the Four of, it's the Four of Wands, okay. So, oh, let me take a look at that. Read a book that features a celebratory event, such as a wedding, a party, or festival. I don't know that any of the books that I have feature a wedding a party or festival that are at least the ones that I'm like have on my immediate TBR. Let me take a look at my shelves. Hang on. So I don't think I have anything on my TBR that has has any of that. So <laughs> I'm going to utilize my team power which is that I can redraw this card once. So we're gonna do that. I'm gonna set that aside so I don't just draw the same card. And we're gonna redraw and hope that I get something I do have a book for. I don't know of anything on my TBR that I know definitely has a wedding, a party, a festival, or any other kind of celebratory event. So we're gonna try again. See what happens. I think I'm gonna pull this guy. No, we'll get this one. We got the High Priestess this time. So that is, read a book with a mystery element. That I definitely can do. Let me take a look at what I wanna read for that. I'll be right back. I'm a fool, I don't even need to look at my TBR. I have Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. That has a mystery element. I need to read this because it's due back in four days. 48 people are waiting, I think, and I need to tackle it. ASAP so that I actually get to read it instead of having to turn it back in and then put another hole on it and wait for ages. So I'm gonna read Middle of the Night for the High Priestess. I have to drive to visit my partner later so I think I might try and start it 
on the way over there because I usually listen at double speed so I should be able to get through like a good two hours of it on that drive. So that works. We're gonna go with The High Priestess and Middle of the Night. I think that's good. That was one of the books I was hoping to get onto the TBR so that works out pretty well for me. And now I'm gonna go actually read. I need to finish editing a vlog and finish doing some laundry and pack for this afternoon. So I'm gonna go do all of those things and I will check back in with you later. All right, I am back from my partner's house. I just got back a little bit ago, um, but I ended up having to turn in middle of the night because I realized that I started it too late to finish it in time before it needed to be turned back in. I listened to about two hours of it on my way over on Saturday and I was gonna listen to it on the way back today, but I realized I would probably get another two hours of it in on my drive and that was gonna leave about, gosh, it was an 11 hour audiobook, so like seven hours left to read. So three and a half to four hours of listening. And I don't have time to do that today. I have a few other things I need to get done. And I don't have anything that I'm gonna be working on that really lends itself to audiobook listening. So it's just, I was not gonna be able to get it done in time. So I've turned it back in. I have also put a new hold on it. So I'll be able to listen to it at some point in the future when I will hopefully have some other things going on that I can have audiobook as background for. Um, so anyway, had to scrap that plan, but it's fine because I do have a couple other books I can swap in for this. I do have Knock Knock Open Wide, which I think has a mystery element. There's something about a woman who had some horrific event happen to her and 20 years later her daughter is convinced there's some sort of family curse that's related to like a creepy children's show. So I feel like that counts as a mystery element and I'm really excited to read this one so I might pick up that. I have also already started The Red Palace. I read a couple of chapters of this right at the end of June and for Tarot Readathon it just has to be at least 51% in the month of July so I have more than 50% of this book left and I could swap that in and this one is a historical mystery set in Korea in I think the 18th century yes 18th mid 18th century so either of those could work I'm not sure which one I'll read yet but it's going to be probably one of those that I'll swap in for that prompt the other update I have for Tarot Readathon is that because it's Monday, we've just gotten our weekly significator prompt. And this week we got Wheel of Fortune, read a book that represents your favorite season. This one I'm not sure about yet. Like, we're gonna have to go over here and look at my shelves because I'm not sure what I'm gonna pick for this. I think, like, this could work. I don't know what season it's set in. Um, I really, I think it's probably in the fall because it mentions that one of the two women is newly arrived in Dublin for school for like the university semester and those usually start in the fall so I think this could be set in fall. I should mention my favorite season is fall um, specifically like late fall when you get towards like Halloween and it's really getting like crisp the air is getting really cold the leaves have really started to turn like that's my favorite part of fall so I feel like this could work um I think it's probably set in the fall based on that and also it's like a horror which Halloween so I think this could work and beyond that I'm not sure the Red Palace doesn't quite work it's set in the winter and also it is it's a mystery but I don't know if it's like a Halloweeny type mystery whereas like Knock Knock Open Wide has a spooky kid show with like a goat or something in it so I think that those could work I also have we're gonna back up without tripping hopefully smack the uh, camera here. I have some like horror stuff here. Like I think the implications could work. I think this is set around Halloween, but I was planning to save that for something else and I'm not sure what else. I feel like then we're getting into kind of like vampire -y books maybe. Like The Once and Future Witches, maybe. Starling House, maybe. Something that's kind of like gothic. I don't think I have anything on this shelf. This is all my like sci-fi and fantasy. I don't know that I have anything there. So like <laughs> travel on over to the other one. This is all my like horror and mystery. So I feel like maybe something in here. I think, is it in here? I think the chestnut man is set in like October. So if I remember correctly. See if I can one-handedly open this to that first page. Almost. Success. Oh hey look, Halloween, 1989. Um, I'm not, I think, gonna be able to show that, but it says October 31st, 1989. So I think this is set like then, and then there's also like a uh, like present timeline that's also set in the fall. 
so I feel like the chestnut man could work and that one I think is on my priority TBR for the year and I haven't read anything off that yet um, unfortunately have not done a very good job with that yeah I don't I don't have a lot that like jumps out to me but I feel like those two could be good or those three I guess I also pointed out the invocations so probably it's gonna be one of those three I think those are gonna be my best bets for the significator I think I might try to prioritize knock knock open wide in part because it's a library books so I need to get read but I think this would be a really good one for this prompt like I think probably set in fall it's kind of horror-y which I think of like Halloween and also it's a, got a mystery element so I could get like two prompts in one go so I think that might be the way I go but I haven't totally decided yet so we'll find out this is a very rambly clip to tell you that I have no idea what I'm reading after uh this but we'll figure it out also I'm turning off that light because it's a little bit bright in my eyes so anyway, also still reading this, also still reading The Black Cauldron. Clearly I didn't do any reading over the weekend, but I'm going to fix that. I'm going to go do some of my other things I need to get done today, and then I'm planning to read this afternoon. So fingers crossed I'm able to get through some of these books and have an update of some kind later. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm very tired, but it was a really good trip. It was really nice. It was just hanging out with them going to some good restaurants, getting some good food, some good drinks, wandering around shopping, just, you know, very chill, very relaxed, and it was really nice. So that was a fun time. We were kind of celebrating my uncle's birthday, and um, my aunt wanted to celebrate that I had got a new job. So it was it was a nice trip. Um, but since we did a lot of shopping, I do have a couple of small things that I picked up. Not very much. I got, first of all, a little um, project bag for myself. I went into one yarn shop while we were out there and I got this cute little like rainbow dragons uh, project bag. So I love a good project bag. I feel like you can really never have too many of them because it's good to have options especially if you're like me and you frequently have like a lot of projects on the go in terms of like knitting and crochet. So very excited to have another project bag. And then we went into a used bookstore and I picked up how to how to Sell a Haunted House, I forgot what the, the word was, um, by Grady Hendrix, because I just finished the Final Girl Support Group, so I'm interested in reading this one. I think there were some mixed reviews of this, but I think the premise sounds interesting, about, like, these two siblings who I think don't get along, but their parents have died, and they're going back to, like, clean out the family house and get it ready to sell, and obviously it's haunted. So I think it sounds super fun, and although there have been mixed reviews, I am interested to see where it goes. So I picked this up for, you know, half price basically, a little less than half price of a uh, standard new hardback, so that was pretty good. And then we also went into an indie bookstore and I picked up a mystery book because I didn't have anything specific I wanted to buy, um, just kind of generally on my like to buy list. It wasn't anything that I wanted to get, but I did see that they had some mystery books and I cannot resist a mystery book. I am a sucker for a blind date with a book or mystery book kind of thing. So this one, if it will show it, says Victorian Gothic Scooby-Doo, stage seances and real ghosts, maybe, perilous, crashing waves and perilous tides, London slums and a sprawling country house atmosphere for days. I thought this sounded really fun and I'm excited to read it. I have already opened, opened it, I know what it is, but I'm actually going to not talk about it here because I have a video I want to do with this. I think I'm going to do a video of me just like reading this book and seeing how I like it since I bought it completely blind. So yeah, that was all I got while we were out there. And other than that, we just hung out and had a good time. It was really nice. And I'm very tired now. We just drove back. We got back like 20 minutes ago or so. And um, I'm tired. Mom drove the first chunk of the trip back and then I drove the last chunk. And uh, yeah, it was a long day. It was a good day, but it was a long day. So I think I'm gonna go possibly read, possibly do something else. I'm not sure what I have the like mental energy for at the moment. I did take my books with me and I've been reading a little bit of Mystery of Dunbegin Castle, which I took the dust jacket off so it wouldn't get damaged in my luggage. Um, but I only managed to read a couple of pages because we were just mostly talking for the whole evening yesterday. So I didn't do much reading, but I do realize that if I can finish this this week, this also works for our um, significator prompt because it's the represents your favorite season. This is set in the fall, 
I had forgotten about this and I don't have the dust jacket with me right now but the cover the cover is like yellows and oranges so it's gonna be perfect it has like the autumnal colors and it's set during the fall in Scotland so excited about that I don't know if I'm gonna go read anymore right now I'm not sure I have the energy for that I'll either do that or I might see if I can play some uh, great ace attorney or something because I did start the second Grace Ace Great Ace Attorney game. <laughs> I'm struggling with words this evening. Um, I did start that second one with my friend the other day, so may end up doing that. Not really sure yet, but I'll, I'll talk to you guys later when I've uh, gotten my shit together. Honestly, I finally have an update. I was down and out with a headache for two days, so I didn't get a whole lot done. But I have done a little bit of reading. But before that, I got some book mail. I got I was a teenage slasher by Stephen Graham Jones. I'm very excited about this. I picked it up and opened, like, opened the box, picked it up, started reading it immediately, and then had to put it down because I was like, no, I can't do this right now. I have three other books I have planned for the month, and this does not fit the prompts that I currently have available. It It is from one of my favorite genres, but like, I'm already most of the way done with this. We'll get to that. And then it doesn't have a mystery element. It's not about a quest or a mission. It doesn't fit. I can't read it right now. Um, I, I mean, I could just ignore my TBR, but like team-based readathon. I want to be getting points for my team. So anyway, how to put this one down. If I don't get to it in July, if I don't manage to get a prompt that works for this, depending on if I finish these other three, uh, I will be reading this in August. I need to read it immediately. Anyway, that said, I also am about 140-ish pages from the end of The Mystery at Dunvegan Castle. And I'm loving this. This is so much fun. Ropa is in such a weird situation. There's a kind of like locked room mystery that's been created after the fact. So a thing happens and then the whole area gets locked down through magic means. And there's like a time crunch happening because the effect that is creating that lockdown is dependent on like one person not sleeping. So it can't be like continued indefinitely. Also there's issues of like food supply and air and all these other things that mean that Ropa has to solve this mystery as quickly as possible, which is very stressful for her. Also, it's a lot of people in this locked room area. And there's also like a lot of political tensions because it's all like really big, uh, important people. It's just so interesting. There's so much happening here. I'm really loving it. There's kind of a bunch of storylines that are coming together as well. We're getting some like history of the castle itself. We're getting some of the history between like Scotland and England and Ethiopia. We're getting um, like political tensions between the different schools that exist in Scotland for magic. It's just there's so many pieces. I'm loving all of it and I just I love Europa. She's such a fun protagonist and it's so like fun but also stressful seeing her go into these situations where she's talking to somebody who's like big and important and knows more than she is and it's so clear to her as well that they're playing the game on another level and she doesn't quite know what's going on or how to navigate that, how to grapple with the politics that are happening around her and being put in a position for the first time where she really has to like play the game and she doesn't know what the rules are. So I'm just finding that so fun and interesting and their stakes are really high for her. There's just so many great things happening here. I love it. I'm about 140 pages from the end. So we've gotten to a point where we have a bunch of different possible people who might have committed the crime that she's trying to solve, but everybody has these kind of like equally compelling motives and opportunities to do this. Um, but there's also the difficulty that like, beyond just this immediate crime there's these bigger political tensions that are playing out in a really um tense way because all these people are now trapped together so they're starting to like vie for power and push at each other a little bit and it's just so much fun i'm enjoying it so much um, i'm gonna try and finish this maybe tonight i have about two hours worth of reading left but we'll see what i get done with that um, i did a couple of chores i have like one or two more things i need to do today and um yeah i'm just having a great time i love this book so much and it definitely is going to work for the significator prompt for the week so i definitely want to finish this asap so that i can turn it in for this week's significator which was the represents your favorite season anyway i gotta stop rambling now my battery is flashing at me and i will hopefully see you again when i have finished this book and started the next one <laughs> well i finally finished mystery at dunvegan castle which i probably should have grabbed before i started this clip but here we are i finally finished it i did not finish it in time to use it for last week's significator which was i am forgetting a book that represents your favorite season so i did not read it quickly enough for that 
However, we did just get our significator for this week, which is to read a five-star prediction. This was definitely a five-star prediction for me because I love this series. I think the writing is great, I love the main character, so I was definitely going into this expecting it to be at least a four star if not a five star so that totally feels like it counts for me and i'll be submitting it as such that's exciting as i said though five star prediction i'm giving this four and a half stars i did love this i think it's really really fun it's a lot of europa being tossed into situations where she is having to play a game that nobody has told her the rules for and having to figure out how to like navigate all of that which made it a really big challenge for her she's also kind of having to do this without her mentor because he is busy doing something else that is also like equally important but he is unable to like assist her through everything she's working on so she's really like out on her own completely for the first time except that she has her friends with her like Priya and Jomo are also helping but it's this really interesting like look at her trying to solve a mystery basically without Calendar's help which I thought was really interesting. I also really like this discussion of mental health in here because we find out that um, Ropa is having some trouble coping with some of the things that have happened to her in the previous two books so she's starting to have some issues with panic attacks in this book which I thought was really interesting and the way that it was engaging with that and how she felt about that and how the people around her work to support her through that and I really enjoyed that conversation. Um, I liked the lock room, locked room element of this. I think the mystery is really interesting. The twist at the end is fantastic and this book leaves a lot of stuff hanging so I suspect there's going to be uh, actually, I know there's going to be at least one more book. I am a little bit sad about some of the stuff that happens at the very end of this. Some of where it leaves off, I think, is really kind of tragic um, in a really interesting way. Like, I enjoyed it. I'm sad because it was great and also this changes things entirely for Ropa and kind of where her life is going at this point and um, her relationships with some really cool people. So I'm just... I'm excited to read whatever comes next in this series. I know there is another book coming out later this year, which I just found out about because I went and looked it up after I finished this one. I wanted to know if there was going to be another book in the series. It feels like it leaves off with a bunch of things still hanging, so there's got to be something that kind of ties all of that together. And uh, yeah, I just really enjoyed this. Had a great time. I'm getting, giving it four and a half stars, though, because there are a couple of things that I think are a little repetitive. There's a lot of, like, Ropa goes and talks to a person get some information that really doesn't confirm or deny anything. She goes and talks to another person, get some information that doesn't really confirm or deny anything. So it felt like there were a lot of conversations that didn't totally like push the plot forward. There was just a lot of her going around talking to different people. And then also there were a couple of interesting characters that I wanted to see more of. There were a couple of people that I think kind of got pushed to the fringes of the story that I think would have been um, interesting to see more of in, in like the investigation. So. Um, that's my only two issues with this and they were very minor so it's still like a four and a half star for me rounded up for Goodreads so excited that I have finally finished this I loved it and I'm looking forward to reading a book four which we're getting in November so that's exciting so now moving into the rest of this week we did just get that significator for five star predictions and I'm not sure what I'm gonna read next for that I think I'm gonna go ahead and read The Black Cauldron today because this is pretty short and it's like 12.30. So I've got lots of time today and I don't have anything else I have to do. I've done my onboarding stuff for the day and I'm just kind of hanging out. I also have injured my wrist somehow. Um, I typically have some issues with repetitive strain injury in my wrist from all of the things that I do that use my wrist. Um, all of the gaming and knitting and um, typing, so. I've strained something in my right wrist and it's doing okay. It's not like affecting my ability to hold things or anything like that, but I do want to give it a rest just so it doesn't get worse, you know? So I'm gonna probably focus on doing like some more reading and trying to be a little bit away from my computer and consoles for a little bit. So good time to get some reading done for the readathon, I suppose. That said, we are like a week out from the end of the month, a little more than a week. Uh, today is the 22nd and it's Monday so next Wednesday is the end of the month and I think that if I'm looking at like two more prompts and I'm gonna read this one today I have one other book I want to read for or one other prompt I need to read for I guess it's more accurate to say I think I do want to go ahead and pull one more prompt because I think it is doable for me to read The Black Cauldron and another book this week because I don't have a whole lot going on so we're gonna go ahead and pull another card as well this is a very long update bear with me um gonna pull all of this out I have extra cards they had some extras that were um like alternate versions of some of the cards in the deck 
because they had too many ideas. I, I love this deck, it's so pretty. But um, let me pull out the ones that we've already gotten. So there's the High Priestess, the Knight of Quills, the Hanged Man, Nine of Ink, and the Ten of Light, I believe was all of my previous pulls. Let me <laughs> double check that that's correct. Uh, yep, correct, okay. So rest of the deck, we're gonna shuffle and get one more prompt and yeah. Yeah, it was a very long update. I was like, let me just update everything all at once. Probably because I haven't done much reading up until today. But it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. We're just gonna... I don't know. Shuffle until something feels right. Or until a card decides to yeet itself into the floor or whatever. Let's go with this guy. Top. Got the chariot. I don't know if that's gonna focus, but we're certainly gonna try. There we go. I really like the art on these. Okay, let me look at what the actual prompt for this is. So I don't know off the top of my head what the chariot is. Read a thriller. Well, <laughs> Lady Killer is a thriller. So, perfect. Problem solved. So I'll be reading Lady Killer that, which is great because that came out earlier this month. I think it's still having some trouble focusing on me, trying to fix that. There we go. Um, that came out earlier this month, so I missed the like um, release date for that in terms of reading the arc. So I'd like to go ahead and get it read. So that works out perfectly. I'm excited about that. And yeah, I'm gonna go read Black Cauldron and I'll catch you guys later. I ended up taking a nap yesterday instead of finishing the Black Cauldron, which honestly, no regrets. It was a great nap. However, I'm reading this again today and uh, I just remembered who dies in this book. Tiny Me read this, not knowing it was part of a series, I read this one only and the only thing I really remembered about it many years later is that there was a character I really liked who dies in like a really heart-wrenching scene in the middle of a glade and uh, I couldn't remember who it was. I was thinking it was one of the characters from the first book it's not. It's a new character from this one. But I have just gotten to the bit that tells me that, he, that this is the character that's going to die because he remarks they had a dream where he saw himself in a glade and the winter all, lay all around. It was warm and sunlit. Birds called and flowers sprang up from bare stones. And I remember that that is his death scene. So now I'm, you know, remembering why Tiny Hope was devastated when she read this book. And, uh, yeah. That is my morning. I'm gonna finish this up and uh, let you know how I feel about it now as an adult. But like, I'm anticipating his death now and I know I'm gonna be sad about it because I was just thinking, oh, I really like this character. I seem to have always carried a curse of, I like this character. He's doomed, isn't he? Because every time I like a character, they either turn out to be evil or they die. And you, well, I should clarify, not a main character, like not a protagonist. Anytime it's a character who is not a protagonist, sometimes, actually, now that I think about it, Jade City, but typically if I like a character, they are doomed. One way or the other, they're doomed. So uh, apparently I've always carried this curse and um, now I get to be reminded of my earliest instance of encountering that. But yeah, enjoying it so far. It's a fun little like children's fantasy adventure thing. I mean, pretty standard. I do think it's interesting that the like adventure we're told about on the back actually takes place in a very short period of time and then things go completely in a different direction. So I think that's kind of fun. But other than that, you know, pretty standard children's fantasy. So I'm gonna go finish it up and I will come back with my final thoughts. Okay, it's a little while later. I have not finished The Black Cauldron and I really enjoyed it again. I remember loving it as a kid. I still really like it. It's kind of your classic good versus evil fantasy story. But I think this does a pretty good job of striking a balance and making its characters more complex than that. There's, I think, only like maybe two people you could consider as like wholly good or wholly evil. Um, because we have like Prince Gwydion on the side of good and Aron, the villain, on um, the side of evil. But there's other characters who do things that could kind of lean either way and they're allowed to be complex like that. I think the ending really deals with that in particular. It's pretty bittersweet, but we see two characters who, um, at various points are, you know, presumed to be good, but then do something that appears evil and then appear to be, you know, not necessarily evil, but bad and self-centered and um, egotistical, but then do something like selfless and kind. 
So like it does a pretty good job of maintaining complexity for its characters and allowing the main character uh, Taran to really like see what becoming an adult means for him because this is very much a book about him like growing into manhood and seeing like the realities of the world and um yeah I really I really enjoyed this I think it's good uh, there are a few points where I feel like some of the obstacles they encounter just aren't really obstacles so there's a few things that they just like get through too quickly and too easily um but overall really enjoyed this and um I was sad again at the death that happened here even though this time I was really struck by how quickly it happens because it happens fairly early in the book a character kind of makes an ominous couple of ominous statements to Taran and then like within hours of that he's dead so it happens very quickly like much faster than I remembered I was thinking it was later in the book um, but it means that like Taran has to kind of fend for himself in a way that he hasn't had to before and make decisions for himself and make difficult decisions in a way that I think was really compelling and yeah I had a good time with it I'm glad I reread it and I get to still read the next I think there's three books it's a five book series so I have three more of these um to look forward to which is fun because I like following the adventures of Taran and his companions um I think my only other gripe about the book is that I don't always love the way that the one female character Ilanwi is portrayed so I was pretty sure her on the cover. She's cool, I like her, but the way that she's portrayed is a little bit um, questionable at moments. So there is that, but it was also written in the 60s, so I guess it, I also kind of expect it to be that way. Um, yeah, pretty good overall, and I'm glad that I have reread it now. Forget all of my other plans and all the other books I said I was going to read because I actually started to sit down to read and I spotted The Trap by Catherine Ryan Howard on my shelves and picked this up immediately. I've been wanting to read this for a while now. I picked this up completely on a whim, but I am so glad I made this decision. I'm almost 100 pages in now and I'm loving it. I'm having a great time. So this is a thriller. It's a mystery thriller um, set in Ireland following a couple of women who are involved in a missing persons case. So this is inspired by some actual missing women that um, were abducted or disappeared sometime in the 90s and have never been found. And this is following uh, Nick, not Nikki, Lucy, whose sister Nikki went missing about a year ago and is believed to be one of the victims of a serial kidnapper. And there's also Angela, who works as a civilian staff member for the missing persons unit, but wants to be a detective. And so they were both kind of getting involved with this investigation and trying to figure things out for themselves. And at the same time, we're getting some perspective chapters from the abductor himself, as he is telling his story or kind of talking about himself to a woman he currently has in the back of his car. I'm really enjoying this. It's so good. I really like the different characters that we have because Lucy and Angela are very different people. And Lucy in particular is quite like self-destructive. Um, she's really been in like a tailspin since her sister's disappearance. And then Angela is trying really hard to be better but is struggling to like get that motivation up to do the things she needs to do to pass her qualifying exams to join the police force. And it's just very different personalities and I'm liking that. I'm really enjoying the ways that they're tackling the investigation because it feels very like in line with the personalities that they've been given. And then the sections with the abductor are really creepy because he is so like nonchalant and it's just like philosophizing at the woman in his car. And I, there's like a section where it I doesn't even like, it almost doesn't even feel like anything is amiss until you get to the end of the section and we're reminded that there's a woman in his car that he's abducted. Like, it's just, it's so creepy. He's so nonchalant and chill about the crimes that he's committing and the, and the like, horrific things he's putting these women through. So I'm really interested in where this is going to go because I don't have a sense yet of where that, like, mystery plot is going. But I'm so glad I picked this up. I'm having a great time. Like I said, I'm almost 100 pages in. I'm, like, page 79, so got about that far. I'm gonna read a little bit more tonight as well. I'm waiting for a friend of mine to be available because we're gonna play some Great Ace Attorney, which is gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, but until then, I'm just gonna be continuing to read this. And yeah, so forget all the other plans because this caught my eye. I remembered I really wanted to read it and now I cannot put this book down. I've been reading it for oh, not that long, but like obsessively since I picked it up.
The other reason that we can forget all those plans is that for the mystery element, I decided I wanted to read something a little bit different. So I put a question in the official Discord like, hey, could I read something along these lines for this? Would this count? And one of the hosts said it would count. So I'm gonna be reading the Kamigawa Food Detectives for that. I just wanted something, again, kind of shorter and lighter, I think. We're at the end of the month, so I feel like it's a good time for these kind of shorter books. But also, um, I've just really been wanting to read this. My mom just read this. Uh, we both <laughs> picked this book up at the local bookstore, and I, she had picked it up first and looked at it and put it back down. And then I picked it up and was walking around with it like, I think I might buy this. And she was like, you know what? Let's get it because we both want to read it. So she's already read this. She loved it. And she said she thinks I'm going to love it. So I'm really wanting to read it. It sounds like it's going to be like really heartwarming and cozy and light. Uh, this is about this father-daughter duo who run a restaurant that is specializing in recreating lost recipes from people's like backgrounds, their histories, and um, you know, recreating things so that people can re-experience those moments or kind of connect back to the memories they have associated with those foods. And uh, it just sounds like really sweet and really um, cozy and interesting. And like I said, my mom loved it and she thinks I'm going to like it as well. So I wanted to pick this up because I've been reading a lot of like thrillers and horror and fantasy lately so I wanted to have something else to kind of mix things up a little bit. So this is what I'm going to be reading next and I'm really excited about these two books so I feel like I am headed in the right direction with my reading. Um, that said I'm going to go read some more. I'm going to stop rambling here so I can go read some more of this before I play Great Ace Attorney tonight and uh, probably won't update again until tomorrow when I will possibly be done with this book. I don't know. We'll see what happens but for now I gotta do some reading and then also some detectiving and some lawyering. It's gonna be a good time. We've been getting a lot of really gray rainy weather the last couple of days. It actually stormed really hard yesterday evening. So it's been a very gloomy couple of days, but I've made good use of them. And I do have two reading updates, which is very exciting, at least for me. Uh, so first of all, delighted to say I finished The Trap by Katherine Ryan Howard. And overall, I really liked it. I think I'll start with the things I didn't like, which is that it feels a little disjointed at points. I think the book is too short. I flew through it, by which I mean I read it in three days. I felt like I flew through it. When I was actually reading it, it was very fast. But it's too short. There were some points where scenes would, set, would happen where something like very drastic would happen. And I was like, I have no idea how we got here because we just jumped over anything that would have led to this point. So I don't know how we got here or why this is happening. There were also a few characters that I felt thought felt like they were a little bit underdeveloped, so their like personalities seemed to flip suddenly, depending on like who was interacting with them, which is I think fair, but it didn't because there wasn't that like development to where we kind of see there's another side of their personality that's maybe lurking there. It felt like it was just this like sudden, you know, flip a switch, now this person is evil kind of a thing. So I think that this needed a little more development, but I still really enjoyed it. I think this is a really smart book and I really enjoyed the story of it. So we're following Lucy and Angela who are involved in this missing persons investigation. Lucy because her sister is missing and Angela because she's a civilian staff member on the missing persons unit. And they both have very different reasons for getting involved and very different ways of approaching the investigation, which I really enjoyed. We also get like a killer cam POV where we're getting these segments of the abductor like talking to the woman who is currently in his car, which were so creepy. He's so like casual and nonchalant about it that it just, it's like he's talking about a hobby that it, and it made it so like unsettling and disturbing. So I really enjoyed those sections. I thought they added a lot of tension to the story because they would just kind of crop up here and there between the other POV sections. And I thought it was just really interesting. Uh, this book also talks a lot about like the ethics of true crime. And I think even more so it talks about the ways that the news media portray victims and how that influences where resources are spent and how much effort is put into looking for people. And uh, particularly how it influences like public opinion and how that has an effect on the way that investigations are run. So I thought this was just really interesting. It had some really great conversations. And I think for the fact that it's very short, it digs into those in a really interesting way and it doesn't feel like they're just surface level. So I really enjoyed that. And I also really love the twists at the end. There's a couple of really smart twists right at the end that completely recontextualize like the whole book in a way that was really like shocking to me, but like so clever. I just really enjoyed that. And yeah, overall, good book. Needed a little more development. Probably could have been about 100 pages longer and I, been, I would have been happier with it. 
I would have been okay with it being 100 pages longer. It does read very quickly, um, so like I don't think you would have felt the extra 100 pages, but I think that would have given it just that like little bit of extra development that would have helped to make some of the revelations make a little more sense. The other reading update I have is that I have read the first story in the Kamigawa Food Detectives, which is a very different vibe from The Trap. This is very cozy and wholesome and sweet, and it's so much about like relationships and memories and nostalgia, and it's it's just very warm. It's a very like comforting book. I'm really enjoying it. I've just read the first story, but we're following Nagare, who is a retired police detective, and his daughter Kweishi, and the two of them run a restaurant and a food detective agency and they recreate recipes from people's pasts so that they can like re-experience them and reconnect to the memories they have associated with them. It's just really sweet. Uh, I really like the relationship between the two main characters as they're working on this kind of food investigation. I also really like the way that Nagare's background as a detective plays into the way that he approaches recreating these recipes because he treats them like a case and I thought that was really interesting in the ways that, like the methods that he uses to figure things out are very like detective like which I think is fun and the first story in here is just like very sweet it's about somebody like wanting to reconnect to something in their in the um in their history that they feel like they need to do once before they can move into this like new segment of their life they're about to have this like major life change and they just want that like one more connection moment before they kind of take that leap into the next part of their life. And I just thought it was really wonderful. And it's just such a charming book. It is such a different vibe, but I'm enjoying having something kind of like lighter and cozier to read now that I've been reading like a lot of thriller and horror books lately. So it is just a nice change of pace for me right now. So that's all the reading I've done. I did also go on a interesting tour today. My mom and I went to this old historic building that they turned into apartments and the preservation teams and the like builder and the architect and everybody who was involved with the project were um, hosting an event today, basically talking about the history of the project, how they got started, um, why they felt it was important to preserve this particular building, how they went about doing it, and then there was like a tour of the actual building itself. We got to see one of the apartments and that was just really cool hearing about like all of the different things that went into it, all the considerations that they had to keep in mind while they were working on it and some of the like challenges that they faced. One of them I thought was interesting was the windows because um, due to like regulations on historical preservation, they had to make it, they had to reuse as much of the like existing pieces of the building as possible. And so there were a lot of windows that ended up having to be replaced, but not all of the windows had to be replaced. So what they were trying to do was figure out a way to make replica windows that were very similar to the original windows, the original steel windows, but they had to use like modern aluminum windows. And it was just really interesting like hearing how they dealt with all of those different kinds of challenges. So that was a really cool tour to go on. It was a nice thing to kind of get out of the house and do today. So we had a good time doing that. So I think that's all of the stuff I needed to update you on, but I do have one more thing I want to do, which is that I think because I just have this left and it's six stories, I've read one, I'm thinking I might read one over the next several days. I might read one more tonight, but then like one each over the next couple of days. I think I'm gonna draw one more card for the month. Maybe this is a terrible idea, but I think I'm gonna be ambitious and I'm gonna draw one more card. So I have the prompt list pulled up on my phone so that I can find whatever we get, um, but let's be ambitious. That's a... Uh, Try for one more. I think I can fit one more in. There's six more days in the month after today. And that is a pretty easy read. Um, it's only six stories long. So this one's trying to jump out of the deck. What is it? <laughs> got the justice card. So I need to figure out, let's see if I can get to focus while I look up the prompt. There it is. So justice is read a book that addresses a social issue. So I have a couple of nonfiction that could work for this, but they're not things that I wanna try and rush through in the next six days. I wanna be able to like really take my time with them. So I think I'm gonna use my team power and redraw this one. So I'm gonna leave this one out and we're gonna draw one more time. And hopefully whatever I get for this, I will have a book for. I just, I don't feel like I have anything there that I could read that quickly and still get like everything out of it. So let me try again.
this one. This is the Four of Quills. Get that. Too. Oh, it it did it on its own this time. Okay, Four of Quills, which, as I recall, is the Four of Swords, which is the third column. So one, two, three. Read a book you un. Okay, read a book you unapologetically enjoy. Something you know is not a literary masterpiece, but you enjoy anyways. I do have something for this and I was actually thinking that I wanted to read it soon. I'll be right back. Okay, something I unapologetically enjoy is the Sookie Stackhouse books, by which I mean I'm on book two, so I've read one of them. Um, these are terrible, but also like silly fun. And I was wanting to read another one of these because it's been a while since I've read a cursed book for my friend group. Um, we did, what was the most recent one? We did The King's Men, which is the third book in the All for the Game series a little while back, like a couple of months ago. And it's now been a couple of months since I've read anything for them. And I was just thinking like, oh, I should read Living Dead in Dallas soon. So I'm gonna read Living Dead in Dallas. This could not have worked out more perfectly for me, especially because I know this is going to be a quick read. These are like not very long. They're very silly. They're not like serious in any kind of way. I believe this one is following Suki after she is, something happens to her. I'm not sure what exactly what happens. She like is attacked by something and is rescued by some vampires. This happens to her a lot. And she, in repayment for that, like, debt that she now owes, she is sent off to, like, Dallas to look for a missing vampire. No clue exactly what to expect here, but more silliness. Because I, I read, a funny story, actually, I read the first book in the series last, no, 2022, in 2020, fall of 2022. I read it for a class I was taking on Southern Gothic literature. It was recommended by one of my classmates as, like, a counterpoint to some of the other stuff we've been reading especially because it was very popular so we ended up reading the first book and watching a couple of episodes of True Blood and talking about it in like that context which was so funny because our professor came in and he's like I don't I don't know how anybody enjoys this I this was painful to read which was very funny um, but also because I got to talk about it in an academic context which was just very silly feeling um, but the first book in the series is Dead Until Dark I believe and um, we get introduced to someone that my friend group and I call Bill the Dillard's Vampire because he gets described and you're like, oh, he sounds like he dresses in stuff that he got at Dillard's. So Bill the Dillard's Vampire. There's also a Viking vampire. Um, Suki can read minds. The whole thing is very silly and over the top and just like ridiculous. But this is going to be perfect to finish out July for this because this will be so quick and easy for me to read. It's gonna be fun to read it like alongside this because this is more like I wouldn't say it's serious but it's like sincere this is just silly good fun it's gonna be a great end of July honestly I'm excited about this so I'm gonna go get ready for bed actually because it's late and I'm tired but then um, I'm gonna let my friends know that we're starting living dead living dead in Dallas I know they've been looking forward to this one so it's gonna be fun and I will check back in with you tomorrow probably because I'm looking forward to do some, doing some more reading tomorrow <laughs> I did manage to read story two yesterday and I really enjoyed it. I'm really liking this book. The second story is very bittersweet. It's following these two older women who are uh, going to the restaurant because one of them wants to recreate a beef stew she had like 50 years ago during this pivotal moment in her life. And she's had like recent events cause her to start thinking about like, what if I made a different choice? So really enjoyed that story. It was really, like I said, bittersweet, um, but I just, I'm really enjoying how cozy this book is. And I've also read about 25 pages of Living Dead in Dallas, which I'm a little confused because the back cover has like, you know, here's what's gonna happen. And it seems like there's gonna be kind of a lot going on in this one because there was unexpectedly a murder in the first few pages, but then Sookie, per the title is like leaving to go elsewhere. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen with that. I don't know if that's gonna like come back in book three or if it's all gonna like get tied together, but kind of got started on that. There's a murder. Um, Suki is now leaving to go assist somebody else that she struck a deal with in book one. They've like summoned her and are like, hey, we need some help with something. So um, she's headed off to do that. That's pretty much all that's happened. Same kind of like silliness that I remember from book one. So the other thing I'm going to be doing today, because I'm hoping to do a lot more reading today, I'm going to read story three from uh, the Kamigawa Food Detectives. I keep forgetting the title for some reason. And I'm also going to hopefully read a good chunk of Living Den Dallas. But before that, 
I'm gonna be doing some organizing today because I have ordered some new shelves to go next to my desk. I got all of the new technology for my new job. I'm working remotely so they sent me like a laptop and a laptop dock and all that stuff. They also sent me some monitors I didn't end up needing. They're back here. Um, but in the process of getting everything kind of set up, I got my desk messier than usual because I needed to clean out the closet over here so I could put some stuff away. Did that. Desk is now extra messy and I just, I'm running out of storage for my desk. My desk itself doesn't actually have a whole lot of storage in it. It has some um, little like openings in the front that I can put stuff in, which I t keep typically like the stuff I use the most frequently. My work laptop's gonna live in there, my bullet journal's in there, stuff like that. But I needed some storage for like my smaller items, like my charging cables, my controllers that I keep by my desk, all of those kinds of things. So I've ordered like a small drawer set from Ikea that's gonna get here today and I'm gonna assemble that and put that next to my desk and kind of put some of my other stuff in it. My pin holder, I don't know if I've showed this on the video yet, but pin holder, I have a lot of pins. Uh, pin holder is going to go on top of it all of that kind of thing. So I'm waiting for that to get here and then I'll be assembling it later today. Very excited about that. I don't love building Ikea furniture, but I do like the satisfaction of having it done and then also being able to organize my stuff into it. So it's gonna be nice. But because I was thinking about needing to do that, I remembered that I haven't done the reversed challenge for my team yet either. And for Pinnacles, that is to reorganize your bookshelves, either your physical or your virtual bookshelves. And I do actually need to reorganize my physical bookshelves in here. So I have this little shelf that my aunt gifted me and I love it, it's so cute. But I wanna eventually use it as like a TBR shelf where I keep stuff that I'm currently reading or things that I'm prioritizing there. For now though, I'm using it to kind of relieve some of the double stacking that's happening on these shelves. And I've managed to clear out a good chunk on this side. I read a lot of sci-fi and fantasy, so that's not surprising. But over here, you can see there's like more double stacking happening. So my goal for the day is basically to use this space I've created over here because I do actually have some gaps. They're hard to see from here, but there are some gaps in here and I want to like condense everything on this side and move a couple of things off of this shelf so that I can hopefully move some of that stuff over here. That's the goal. Um, so we're going to do that reorganiz reorganization as soon as I get some breakfast and then hopefully my drawers will be here and I can start building those as well. So that is the plan for the day, hopefully followed by lots of reading, but I'm gonna go get started. This, this is it. This is what we got. Success. It's better than it was. So this is the little drawer thing I built. It is the Helmer, I believe, for a unit. It's all metal, which I wasn't expecting. I probably should have looked at that, but yeah pretty easy to put together. It feels a little unsafe while you're building it because some of the bits are a little sharp, but as long as you're careful, it was really pretty easy to put together. After I get some food in me, possibly tomorrow, because I have a game tonight, uh, 13th age with my friends, but possibly tonight, possibly tomorrow, I'm going to put the crap from my desk onto this. Success. Okay, I know I took a moment yesterday to be excited about having gotten my little uh, drawer set put together and organized. I finished cleaning off my desktop and I just, I'm so excited. This is the neatest my desktop has ever looked. You can see I've got some stuff inside of it, but like that's also organized. Like my work laptop and the keyboard and mouse that go with it and my backup mouse that actually is not a great mouse because it double clicks. But anyway, I've got like my Remarkable, my note taking supplies over here. And the desktop is like clear. I've got my microphone, it's fine. I finally have my iPad out, which I haven't used much because I didn't have a good place to set it, but I'm wanting to use it for my like kind of task organization, I think. Um, just because having that on a separate screen is helpful for me for like easy reference. So I've got like that, I've got my monitors up. I do have a monitor on coming, so this will change a little bit. But, like, for now, great. Speakers move. we got some little friends. Not sure what to do about that yet. That is my headphones, or actually my headset, I should say, for work. But, like, look at all this desk space. I'm so excited. It looks so good, and it hasn't been this clean, I think, ever. So I'm hopeful that I can keep this up and, like, keep everything organized and neat like this. Because, obviously, I'm going to have a lot of technology on here. This keep this laptop is going to be up on this corner 
and then I'll have to like push this keyboard back and pull out that keyboard and that mouse and like connect those. I'm hopefully at some point going to get a wireless keyboard that I can just like swap inputs instead of having to have two keyboards. That's the ultimate goal. But like, I'm just, I'm so pleased with how this has turned out. And I got that closet over there cleaned out as well. So really, honestly, I'm really happy with the organization progress I have done in the last week. And I have my backpacks all hung up over here. So yeah, I'm just delighted. I know this isn't reading related. I'm just very excited about it. I needed to share. So there you go. Desk ready to go tomorrow because tomorrow is my first day of my new job. So very excited about that. Also very nervous, but very excited too. Well, I have not managed to finish my last two books. I really underestimated how tired it was going to be in the evenings and how busy it was going to be in the evenings around my new work schedule. So I did not manage to finish either of these, but I'm pretty far into both of them. So I'll just, you know, give you a little update on where I'm at. So I'm here. I'm on story four, I think. I just have like a small chunk left. I am using the dust cover as a um, bookmark, but you can kind of see from here that I just have this like small chunk here left to read. Um, I am really enjoying this still. It's very repetitive. Um, every story follows like exactly the same format. So I think it's just kind of like soothing. It's very uh, cozy and I think some of the stories are a little bit bittersweet, but it's all like very like hopeful and um, I don't know, it's just all like very human if that makes sense. And so I'm really enjoying the stories in there and I've been having a good time reading it and just kind of like savoring each story, enjoying all of the food descriptions. I do think there's some cultural stuff that's kind of going over my head just because I don't know a whole lot about Japanese food culture and so I think there's some elements there that I'm missing but overall having a great time with it. The other one, Living Dead in Dallas, I'm about a third of the way through according to Goodreads. It looks like it's maybe further than that though based on my bookmark but I'm like 110-ish, I think just under 110 pages in. And um, this is silly and stupid. And uh, <laughs> I've been reading it and telling my friends about it. And one of my friends is just like so pissed off that Suki is so like boring and she just reacts to things, like things happen to her. She doesn't really do things. And uh, <laughs> my friend is so mad about that. So I was like, that's the reason I am reading it and not you because she would not be able to get through uh, book one of the series. She probably would have read like a chapter or two and then given up. But we are having a good time like experiencing it this way. Because I'm having like a fine time reading it. It's fun. It's silly. It's just like so unserious. And it's been kind of a nice like brain break in the evenings after work because I have been taking on lots of new information, learning all kinds of new processes, finding out like where all the documents are stored, just like all kinds of stuff like that. So like work has just been a lot for the first few days and having that kind of like a mindless thing I can just read and not have to think about has been kind of nice really. So that's where I'm at with those. I haven't finished them but I have made good progress. I am going to carry those over into the beginning of August. It does mean I don't get to count either of them for my team but oh well. I just kind of underestimated how tired it was going to be for the first few days of kind of adjusting back to a full-time schedule. But I am really enjoying it. Job is going well. I'm liking what I'm doing so far. It's been a little bit slow to start just because I don't have a lot of tasks on my plate yet and um, you know it's just been a lot of like learning. So yeah it's good so far. Everybody's been super nice. I really like the team I'm working with. There's a couple of other new people on the team as well so it's kind of nice that I'm not the only one kind of getting to grips with things. And uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's, it's interesting. And I think there's some cool projects coming down the road. So I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, this, this is it. I think this is it for Terra Readathon. I am officially going to admit defeat on those two books and prepare for August because tomorrow is the first. So yeah, this has been really fun. I really enjoyed the readathon again this year. And I feel like this really helped boost my reading. I've been slowly coming out of a slump over the last couple of months. And I feel like I've gathered some more momentum this month. And I'm hoping to carry that energy into August. So I think that's it. Uh, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. 
If you have, I hope you'll consider giving it a like, maybe even subscribing to see what comes next. I'm currently posting on Tuesdays and Saturdays, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.